listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Have you ever given orders for morning to begin? Or have you ever shown the dawn where its place was? The dawn takes hold of earth by its edges and shakes evil people out of it. At dawn, the earth changes like clay being pressed by a seal. The he hills and valleys stand out like folds in a coat. Light is not given to evil people. Their arm is raised to do harm, but it is broken. Have you ever gone to where the sea begins? Or have you ever walked in the valleys under the sea? Have the gates of death been opened to you? Or have you seen the gates of the deep darkness? Do you understand the great width of the earth? Tell me if you know all these things. What is the path to light's home? Where does darkness live? Can you take them from their places? Do you know the way to their homes? Surely you know, if you were already born when it happened. Have you lived that many years? Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting us be part of your day. Myra just read from Job chapter 38, verses 12 through 21 to get us started. Um, because Job's asking some very poignant questions here, isn't he? And that's what we're going to look at tonight. Because when seem, things seem out of control, you can count on a couple of things. One is, you are not in control, okay? The other is, your creator is in control. My name is Jerry Mitchell. Myra's sitting here with me tonight. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> and we are going to look at what happens when things seem to be spinning out of control. Kind of. Like it is like now. Like it is now, sort of. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Before we get started in that, I uh, came across an article a couple of days ago, actually on the 5th, so yeah, two days ago. And it's interesting that it's written this time, because I have said, you know, the way I have sort of been speaking out against some of the things the Pope's been doing and convincing, hopefully, some of our Catholic listeners maybe to withhold some of their finances from the church, guess what's going on? Um, the Swiss guard, who is charged with protecting the Pope and the Vatican, uh, they are quitting, <laughs> or at least three of them are resigning, because of the, the uh, vaccine mandate. They are resigning rather to, than... Uh, choosing to be vaccinated. And here's the really strange thing. Are you ready for this? There's no religious exemption at the Vatican. Let me say that again. There's no religious exemption at the Vatican. You'd think that would be a place where religious exemption would be tolerated, maybe? <laughs> Uh, th this actually comes from Pamela Geller, uh, October 5th of this year. That you know, Sometimes you, you can't make this stuff up, okay? <laughs> you just can't. If I was to write this in a fiction novel, nobody would believe it because it would be too far-fetched. Right? They just say, there's no way this can ever happen. But here we are. And it plays into what we're going to talk about tonight because... Some things do seem like they're out of control. Now, the Almighty is asking Job some questions. <laughs> and they're kind of radical, aren't they? Um, you know, have you ever, have you ever been to where the sea begins? Have you ever, uh, have you ever walked in the valleys under the sea? Not even Jacques Cousteau can say that. He might have swam through them, but he didn't walk in them. Do you understand how big the earth is? Do you really get it? Do you have a clue how huge 
things are. <laughs> Here's a really good one. What is the path to light's home, and where does darkness live? Can you take them to their places? Can you hold light's hand and walk it home in the dark? Keep it safe. I don't think so. Let's hear some more. Meyer's going to read uh, from Job chapter 38, uh, 22 through 30. <clears throat> have you ever gone into the storehouse where snow is kept? Or have you seen the storehouses for hail? I save the snow and the hail for times of trouble. I save them for days of war and battle. How do you get to the place where light comes from? Or where is the place from which the east winds are scattered over the earth? Who cuts a waterway for heavy rains? And who sets a path for the thunderstorms to follow? Who waters the land where no one lives? Who waters the deserts that have no one in it? Who sends rain to satisfy the empty land so the grass begins to grow? Does the rain have a father? Who is father to the drops of dew? Who is the mother of the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the sky? The waters become hard as stone. Even the surface of the deep ocean is frozen. You <clears throat> Can any of us do these things? You know, do do we know where snow is kept? Think about that. Now that might seem like an odd question. But there's some actually some very, very scientific questions that we don't know the answer to yet and that can be found in Job. Now, Job lived around the time of Abraham. We're not sure if they knew each other. There's no evidence of that. Job is described, though, as a great man of the East. <clears throat> now, I don't know how far East. I We just don't know. There's things here... Uh, that really give us some, some food for thought. The language of Job indicates it's a very, very cold time on earth. The oceans are frozen. Now, Job was not a prehistoric caveman. Hi, Carol. Glad to see you join Hi, us. Hi, Carol. Job wasn't a prehistoric caveman, but we could look at and see that he lived at a time that could be considered the Ice Age. I mean, when you think about the questions, when you think about the questions, have you gone to the storehouse where snow is kept or seen, have you even seen, have you looked at the storehouses for hail? Again, he goes back to the light. How do you get to the place where light comes from? The questions, you know, there's two entire chapters of these questions. Two entire chapters. When I stop and I think, what was the Almighty getting at when he starts asking Job these questions? It kind of boils down to, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? The questions he asks, though, are very, very expressive. There's, now, we, you didn't read them all. <clears throat> There's questions in here that are scientific, and we can't answer them today. We don't know. Job knew more in the Ice Age than we know today. And this is just after the flood, right? This is just after the flood, just after uh, the plains of Shinar. People are being scattered. Everything's out there in its place. Abraham uh, leaves the, the land of the Chaldees. And something amazing happens. You know, the, the enemy goes strolling across the throne room of heaven. And 
The Almighty says, where have you been? <laughs> and then we learn that God looks at Job and suggests Job why? Why does the Almighty suggest that the enemy uh, test Job? <clears throat> the answer is simple. Job trusted his creator completely. And because he trusted his, complete, his creator completely, the creator trusted Job. He trusted Job enough to use Job to defeat the enemy. We get up to chapter 40, Job finally gives a chance to speak just a little bit. <clears throat> and he says, I'm not worthy. I can't answer anything. I'll just put a hand over my mouth. I'll just, I'll just keep quiet. He says, I spoke one time, but I can't answer you anything. I, I'll, I'll just not even, well, I spoke again there, but you know what? It's time for me to not say anything else. It's, it's kind of like the Almighty looks at Job and says, Just suck it up here, buttercup. And he spends another two chapters describing who's in control and who has the authority to and power to allow some things and put an end to other things. There is a couple of denominations in the world that will try and teach you that, well, Satan's in control. And he just isn't. And we look to Job for that example. If you think things are out of control, look to Job for the answers. He will tell you who's in control. He will tell you why he's in control. In Job chapter 42, after he gets a, <laughs> a very vivid description of what the Almighty can do, he has this to say. In verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be ruined. You ask, who is that? Who is that made my purpose unclear by saying things that are not true? Surely I talked about things I did not understand. I spoke of things too wonderful for me to know. You listen? Sorry. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will ask you questions and you must answer me. My ears had heard of you before, but now my eyes have seen you. So now I hate myself. I will change my heart and life and sit in the dust and ashes. Job thought he knew. Now he does know. And and he says, I heard, but now I've seen. Now I understand. I will change my heart. That sound like something I've been saying for a while? Repent for the kingdom's hand? Yeah, thought so. <clears throat> Job thought he knew the way the world really works. But he received a lecture from the one who made the earth, and he realized how insignificant he really is. He realized he can't do anything, because the reality of all of that that he just learned is this. No created being has been given the complete authority or has the ability to change anything the Creator wants to accomplish. It's that simple. When we think we're more important than we are, and we try to tell our Creator to do what to do, we're in a world of hurt. If we think we're more important than we are, 
and we try to convince ourselves that we alone can save the world, we're, we're in trouble. When we think we're more important than we are, and we try to do anything on our own, we should actually ask ourselves, can we change anything our Creator has planned in the big picture? You know, we can maybe make it a little inconvenient from time to time, but can we really change anything He has planned? You know, this world might seem out of control, but it's not. There's certain portions of mankind that are out of control. There are certain people who are certainly out of control. There are some people who can't even control themselves. That's another story. <laughs> but the people who have rejected the Creator or work against the Creator, those are the ones who really are trying to throw a wrench in the works, right? They're trying to disrupt. They're trying to destroy. They're, tr they're trying to do things. But I'm going to say this one more time. No created being, I don't care who it is or how long ago they were created, has the authority or the ability to change anything that our Creator has established. They can make life difficult. They can be downright disruptive. But no created being has the authority or the ability to change anything our Creator has established because they are the created, not the Creator. Because Job remained trusting and faithful, he was rewarded with twice as much as he had before. And he had what is described as the most beautiful daughters. Now, we read that and we get something in our minds, don't we? We probably think of outward beauty. But look around the world today. Look around your community. What do you see? Are the people who reject and rebel against the Creator healthy? Think about your answer. If they really reject and rebel against the Creator, are they healthy? Are the people who reject and rebel against the Creator really beautiful? Not just skin deep, right? You know, beauty's only skin deep, ugly cuts all the way to the bone, right? You all know that saying, don't, 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 let me think you don't. Are they, are they actually beautiful? Look in your worship community. There are some people there who might appear pretty. Some may be described as gorgeous outwardly. Look in their eyes and tell me what you see. Chances are you're going to find things that distract from what could be described as a whole or complete person. You're going to find confusion. You're going to find fear, illness, trouble. The world is not out of control. A growing number of people seem to be out of control. But you don't need to be part of that. And you can't fix their rebellion. You can't fix their rejection. You know, how many times have we heard and how many times have I talked about, you know, somebody sees something going on and they say, well, they just need Jesus. They just need to get them some Jesus doesn't work like that okay they can get all the jesus they want but until they change their heart like job where are they where are they <clears throat> you know every person each and every person has to repent independently and it needs to be their choice we can influence that choice and that's what we're supposed to do, is influence that choice of repentance. And we influence that choice not by screaming at them, you need you some Jesus in your life. 
That's not how you influence people. It just isn't. Trust me. You influence them by example, by living the way you are already designed to live by your creator. <laughs> you know, the, the people living in Sodom and Gomorrah had the chance. They had the time to change. They'd even been warned. They had Lot living among them as an example, and they refused to change. They absolutely flat out refused to change. They were destroyed. Right? All the cities of the plain were destroyed. The people of Nineveh were warned, eventually. You know, Jonah finally got there. He finally walked through. He begrudgingly warned them. And what happened to them? Well, they did change. They did repent. And they were dis they were spared the destruction of what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities of the plain. There are very few people who actually are warning others today that they need to change, to live the way the Creator designed them to live. You know, there's... <clears throat> We have church revivals today with good Christian preachers saying, you know, their man-made gospel, right? Join the church, give us money, and go to heaven. If, if you just sign up right here, write us a check every week, we'll make sure you go to heaven. Um, have they ever been to where the ocean began? Have they ever walked in the valleys of the deep? Have they, you know, any of those questions. If they can't do any of those things, how can they ensure your salvation? They can't. Only you can. They don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. Until people who seem out of control because they are either rejecting or rebelling against the Creator, and until they stop relying on going their own way, until they stop relying on self, until they choose uh, the, the Creator instead of self as God, they have no moral compass. They have no compass of conscience because they have rejected the instructions of the Creator. I know pastors like that. Just saying. Well, my Sabbath is on Wednesday. Uh, when did you get to change it? Just saying. Heard that in a message, just so you all know. If you have a pastor that says, well, my Sabbath is on any other day than the seventh day, you might want to consider a different pastor. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people who reject the Almighty, they reject His instructions, a lot of these people know that they need to connect. They're sitting in the church pews. They're sitting in the synagogues. But until they repent and their lifestyle reflects repentance, they are out of control. And the world that they influence will seem out of control. You don't want to participate in their chaos. If you really want to make a difference and have the ability to influence and change for the good, and I don't mean just, you know, hope to get rich, hope to, you know, improve yourself. I mean, actually change mankind for the better. You have that ability to do that. And I know a lot of people, oh, well, 
how can how can I do that? I'm just, you know, I'm just out here living by myself. You know, I'm I'm listening to some crazy person in secret on the podcast on Thursday nights and on Monday mornings, and and he's telling me I can do all these things, but I just don't know how to do it. Well, it's simple, okay. Here and it's free. <clears throat> you go to giveguide90.com and you start doing what it says. You take those little steps and you keep doing them every day. Every day you keep doing them. And every once in a while you add a little something. And every once in a while you add a little something. And every once in a while you add, and it becomes a lifestyle. It doesn't become a once and done thing. God, our creator, you know, if, if he chose to create and then walk away, where would we be? Where would we be? He didn't choose to create and walk away. He chose to create and get involved. And that's what you need to do if you want to improve your life and the lives of the people around you. You have to be involved. You have to choose to live the lifestyle that shows you want to help mankind improve. You don't do it just for your selfishness. You know, you're not I'm not selling fire insurance, right? I'm not keeping you out of out of the the um, brimstone pit. All right. What I'm saying is get involved. It's not difficult. Little itty bitty things you can do every day to turn your life around. When you're living the way that you're designed to live and you realize that everybody else out there seems to be out of control, you understand it's our creator who is in complete control. He allows some certain things to happen. He allows a certain amount of ugliness and chaos and evil so that those who choose him are separated from those who rebel and reject him. Because, you know, if there wasn't a good and a bad, how could you tell the difference between the good and the bad, right? It'd all be stirred up together. And he says, no. I choose you to be separate. I choose you to be holy. I choose you to be set apart. You don't need to choose evil over our creator. Okay? If you want to be disruptive, you don't have to choose evil over the creator. You can simply choose self. Well, I want to do what I want to do. I want what I want when I want it, right? <clears throat> if you choose to do things your own way, you're going to be counted among those who appear out of control. You're going to be adding to the disruption. You're going to be adding to the chaos. But I would suggest that you choose the Creator and live the way that He designed you to live you don't need to participate in the chaos. You don't need to participate in the trouble. You don't need to be part of the problem when you can be a huge influence on the solution. It's not necessary for you to reject or rebel against the Almighty in order to create disruption. All you have to do is choose self. So instead of choosing self, why don't you choose the one who chose you, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> you have the ability, you have the authority to influence good in the world. Because <laughs> the good in the world is what the Almighty chooses to establish. Did that make sense? Okay, I thought I said that right. Be one of the ones who are willing to make a difference for the good. It doesn't cost you anything. Well, yeah, it does. 
you have to change. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to get in tune uh, with the Almighty, so to speak. You have to learn to see things through His eyes instead of through your own eyes. The world's not out of control as out of control as you might think it is. There are some people who might be out of control. But, you know, the world itself, it's very much in control. It's very much being controlled. It's very much establishing as or I should I should say it's very much tolerating as much evil as the Almighty is going to allow to, to tolerate before he steps in. While you still have time, I would turn around. As Job said, I will change my heart. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Have a great weekend and make a difference. Absolutely. Till Monday when I will be unsupervised. Yes, you will. Many, many blessings, everyone.